Rise and shine, everyone. Six o'clock here on your Thursday morning. May the 4th be with you. Jason and Alicia here to guide you through the morning here. Yeah, you haven't done your Yoda voice yet. There's still time. We got another hour of the show, so stick around for that. But first, let's get over <laughs> to Guy. He says he can do one. All right, I'll. All right, Jason, don't let us down. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> You're in that green suit, so it's only fitting. <laughs> All right, look, y'all. Hey, uh, if this doesn't cheer you up on a Thursday, I don't know what will. Time now, 601. Sun already up, right? Sun was up this morning at 558. 55, and you'll see southwest winds only at 5 miles per hour. Perfect morning to crack the window, let the breeze in on the drive-in. Uh, soak up the sunshine. Temperatures in the 60s by 10 a.m., 66 by 11 later this morning. Highs make it to the mid-70s. Beautiful day, right? Well, changes on the way. I'll show you this three day forecast 67 tomorrow, isolated PM showers, and then again, rain chances for Saturday. Tomorrow starts the beginning of this wet pattern on the way. So uh, I'll keep you updated on that. Megan, roads looking good, right? Yes, you got it. Roads are looking great this morning. Look at this. Lots of green. If you want to take a look at your route into work, let's take a little closer look right now. We'll take a look at the 35 split. This is up in the north uh, 35 E. This is southbound at junction 35 W where it splits. Look at this. Everything moving along really nice this morning and then heading south. Here we go. There we go, 35W northbound, so this is heading up north uh, at County Road 42. Again, can't complain. We have no traffic accidents, uh, crashes to report this morning, but of course I'll keep a tab, keep tabs on things and keep an eye out. But again, things are looking really good across the metro. Thank you, Megan. We'll check mm -hmm. back in a bit. Developing this morning, dozens of gang members in Minneapolis are off the streets this morning and behind bars. It's an unprecedented federal takedown meant to make the streets of Minneapolis safer. So take a look at their mugshots. More than 40 members from two different gangs charged in connection with years of violence across the Twin Cities. And this morning, we're learning more arrests could be coming. CC is at the federal courthouse this morning, breaking down this massive case. CC. Hi, good morning. You're right about more charges coming soon. Yesterday's massive bus involved two gangs out of Minneapolis, but authorities say they're looking to take down another gang very soon. I'll have more on that in a minute. But first, authorities say the men who they just arrested have really been wreaking havoc in the community. They say they've allegedly been involved in revenge killings, assaults, and shootings that involve the murders of innocent people. Now, uh, the charges involve 28 members of the Highs Street Gang and they operate out of North Minneapolis and 17 members of the Bloods. They operate out of South Minneapolis. The charges show drug dealing and violent activity by the Bloods at 38th in Chicago. That's also known as George Floyd Square now. Meanwhile, authorities say a lot of the alleged criminal activity from the highs is centered around Merwin's Liquors and Winter Gas Station in North Minneapolis. Officials say charges are coming for members of the Lowe's Street Gang next. While other cities face chronic, high, violent crime rates year after year, that is not who we are. No one should accept the violence these gangs inflict as the new normal in Minneapolis. Now, officials say this huge bust happened because of a change in strategy. The feds are calling it the RICO law. I'm Jennifer Hoff. Prosecutors charging those gang members are using what's called the RICO law. It's a unique tool first enacted back in 1970. It targeted mob bosses at first, but now both government and civil parties use it to go after people allegedly involved in a corrupt organization. Prosecutors have brought these same charges against singer R. Kelly and even the Hells Angels. And in the 90s, a Minnesota bookstore owner was put out of business, accused of racketeering and selling obscene magazines. Charges can be pretty severe, too, up to 20 years in prison and thousands of dollars in fines. And of course, we will continue to follow this story. And as new details come out, we'll bring them straight to you. Make sure you follow us on air and online for updates. We've learned this morning that a plan St. Paul City leaders believe would cut down on gun violence is now on hold. The City Council tabled a vote on an ordinance that would require gun owners to secure a firearm and a locking device and store ammo separately. They want to clarify the language in the ordinance and reschedule the vote for two weeks from now. Those opposed to the ordinance say it violates state law. Five hours from now, the man charged with setting fires at Minneapolis mosques heads back to court. Prosecutors say Jackie Little was seen on camera at two mosques in Minneapolis before fires began. 
In an affidavit written by an ATF agent, Little's mom told them he's had a fascination with fire from a young age. She also said she suspects him in other unreported arsons. Little appeared in federal court earlier this week. This morning, we now know the legislature's joint committee focusing on legalizing recreational marijuana has been formed. It's a group of 10 state lawmakers that will work to combine the House and Senate versions of the bill. That final version will need to pass both chambers before it can go to the governor's desk. This morning, we are live in El Paso, Texas, where a looming humanitarian crisis is happening at the southern border. The Secretary of Homeland Security is on his way there now, and Gabe Gutierrez is already on the ground to show us what's happening. We are tracking the latest developments in what some migrant advocates are calling a humanitarian crisis here at the southern border. Local officials here in El Paso have declared a state of emergency, and this is why hundreds of migrants sleeping in the streets and city officials say they do not have the resources to deal with this. We're also getting new reaction to the deployment of 1,500 active duty troops to the southern border ahead of a COVID era border restriction known as Title 42 being lifted next week. Border Patrol officials say they expect the flow of migrants to potentially double. I'm Gabe Gutierrez in El Paso, and we'll have the very latest on this developing story as Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas visits the southern border and defends the Biden administration's response. 607 on the clock, and if you're thinking about buying a home or a new car, you may want to hold off a little bit longer. Interest rates are now the highest they've been in more than 16 years. The central bank voted about 15 hours ago to raise the interest rate by a quarter point to 5.25%. Uh, while the hike is supposed to help cool down inflation, it also adds to growing concern about the economy. We're less than a month away from the government running out of money, and so far this year, there's been three bank failures. Perhaps the banks will lend less as rates rise, so that, of course, dampens their business. Now, all of this comes as people deal with rising prices. Right now, mortgage rates are at 6.58%, and credit card rates are now over 20%. In about five hours, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry will give the State of the City Address. This will be his first in-person address since 2019. If you'd like to watch it, you can stream it on the city's YouTube page. Well, while water is receding across the state, for the most part, high water continues to create issues locally. The Susan G. Cohen Race for the Cure is one of those uh, uh, events that's going to have issues with that. The annual Mother's Day race is now moving to Viking Lakes in Egan because of flooding at Harriet Island in St. Paul. It's still not too late to register at komen.org slash Minnesota race. And also our own Lee Val Valsvik will MC. 608 on this Thursday, sitting here at 57 degrees. It's been good this week to us for now. It's gonna be another beautiful day here in the Twin Cities as well. So let's get right to Guy with more on that. Hey Guy. Hey, good morning, a beautiful Thursday. Uh, I'm looking forward to enjoying the day. I hope you are as well. Get outside before change is on the way. Here's your daily almanac. High 70, that was yesterday. Yesterday was also beautiful. Uh, low yesterday morning, 38, a little chilly. Average high 64, average low 45. We have been pushing below average temperatures past couple of days. Yesterday was kind of our uh, one of our first above average days of the week, that is. And our sunrise time yesterday morning, six sun up this morning. Sun was up this morning at 5.58, our first five o'clock hour sunrise. All right, here's your sunrise photo looking outside this morning. Just a pleasant day. It already feels spectacular outside. Temperatures are in the mid 50s for the drive this morning. You have the sunshine, 56 at 8 a.m., 59 a little bit later at 9. West south wind, west winds at 7 miles per hour. Still a little dry out here with the humidity levels, but with the winds not as breezy, that will mitigate those fire uh, elevated fire concerns that we had earlier in the week. 55 right now, southwest wind just at 5. 56, 8 a.m., 63, 10 a.m., keeping sunshine wall to wall throughout the day, passing clouds a little bit later on this afternoon and evening. Going into your overnight planner, maybe you're going to be out a little late on Thursday. I know some folks who love to kind of party late on Thursdays. Hey, if you're out late, temperatures in the 53, right around 2 a.m., clear skies 49. This is uh, sunrise time tomorrow morning. Come back and join us at 430. That's when we start our newscast tomorrow. I'll be tracking some showers in the southern half of the state. Some of those showers could inch up into the metro, but we're not looking at any washout conditions, so no need to reschedule any plans if, if you were thinking about doing that. Saturday looks like our wettest day 
uh, on the weekend, but still Saturday, it's not going to be raining nonstop, right? So we'll just continue to keep you updated throughout the week as we track this out. Have the Care 11 app ready to go this weekend if you're going to be outside. Uh, you know, it's available in the App Store, the uh, Google App Store, whatever that App Store is. I haven't been, I don't have an Android, but if you do, uh, it's available there. Temperatures in the 50s and 70s as you get into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That sounds lovely, Guy. Thank you. It's looking good out there on the roads this morning. We're heading out to the west. If you're coming in from Wisconsin in the Hudson area, this is 94 heading west. This is at Ideal Avenue North. You can see everything is moving along really nice in this area and just keep on moving here along 94 in Oakdale. Again, this is still heading west. This is at Highway 100 St. Croix, St. Croix Trail. Things looking really good there. You can see it is construction season, so always plan ahead just a little bit in advance because you never know how that might affect your commute in the morning. We'll take one big look, last look here at the Metro. Again, lots of green. We love to see it.